So we're here in uh, the Qar, in the central marshes of Iraq, between the Euphrates and the Tigris, in between the central marshes and the Hamar marshes. You go still now to the south of Iraq, you see the marshes, which are uh, wetlands uh, that, you know, during the floods and the tides, they, they fill with water and there's fishing there, there's a buffalo, water buffaloes that live in the, in the marshes. The water buffaloes give milk. Uh, there is the reed that grows in the marshes and this is one of the source of incomes. This is how, you know, the culture has persisted all over these thousands of years. Neskin ala sinin tawila wa ba'ida til mada ajdad ajdadna sikunu fi ahwar atchibai shab. Wal ahwar tharwa tabi'iyya khalaqaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala li sikkan kafat al bashar. Nahnu nara al ahwar shay jameel lana wa li ahfadna. Ahab al ahwar, ahab biyat al ahwar. عشت بالهور من عمري أربع سنوات أذهب للهور مع والدي عندما كنت طفل صغير حبيت الهور حبيت الطيور حبيت الحيوانات اللي كانت موجودة and I يعني كنا سابقا يعني أيام العطل وأيام الجمعة وغيرها كنا هنا الكبايش يعني تنملي بالسواح the marsh has a deep story. You can see the Madif now. The Madif is uh, Sumerian style. It is built before 6,000 uh, uh, years ago uh, from the same materials, from the same, the same styles. And now the culture of the southern of Iraq it is Sumerian cultures. Uh, the marsh is not only nature, not only water. It is culture and it is uh, deep historical. The marsh is very important for the person, not only for the economy of the police, but for their life, for the sociology. Political opponents of the Saddam Hussein regime would come to the marshes because the area provided protection from the police, who could not navigate the waterways. The local population also opposed the regime. In 1991, Saddam responded to the situation by draining the marshes almost completely building soil embankments to stop the natural flow of water to the marshes from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Most of the people here in the southern and the marsh, they need a freedom and Saddam regime have, have found a freedom. And some of the policy man from the other side of Iraq is come here to the marsh. You see, because the marsh is good defense area for them. The, the route is very higher and there is a water and the soldier did not can able to go in, in, inside the marsh to cut them. They come here and because this reason Saddam Hussein drain the marshes and then make a, a secret uh, roads in each place of the marsh to attack the person who attacked him, him regime. She drained the marsh completely, she destroyed the most of the village, all the persons emigrated to another area and they suffered from, from uh, their, their life. Before 91, the total pop of, uh, population of the Chibaish is 60,000 persons. When, the, when uh, Al Ba'ath regime drained the marsh uh, during 91 until 2003, Oh, the most of the people uh, migrated and to another area that there is a water, there is a canal, there is irrigation uh, canals in, 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 the, uh, in Papillon or Fallujah or another area. And only still in Chibai, 6,000 6, people from 16, 16. After Saddam fell in 2003, local people broke open the soil embankments to allow water to flow into the marsh area again. After 2003, when the water returned back to the marsh again, the, the, the person returned back to the marsh, and now the population of Chibaish is uh, 62,000. Why they return back here? Because they depend on the marshes for the activities of economy. 
the most of the people uh, can fishing, can uh, buffalo breeding, or like this. And also the uh, uh, sociality of, of, of here is very, very stronger. Everyone know everyone in the village. Everyone has a relationship with everyone. Today, the marshes face renewed threats to its water source from drought, lack of an international agreement on water management for the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, inefficient irrigation practices, and especially from a series of dams the Turkish government plans to build on the Tigris River. Hassan Kef is the village uh, in Turkey where they're going to build the Ili Sudan, which is the main thing that we're tackling. The Ili Sudan is the biggest dam that Turkey is going to build in the Tigris River. People who live in the marshes who are like basically fishermen also, fishermen and buffalo herders are going to be displaced. The marsh Arabs, for example, who live here for 5,000 years ago, who are descendants of the Sumerians, are going to be displaced. And this is going to be a natural, environmental, and historical, cultural catastrophe. This is Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers. It has history of humanity. This is the cradle of civilization. and. I cannot accept that we are just letting it go because of economic and political interests. It's, it's not <laughs> it's not acceptable. السدود راح اسوي صحراء yeah. ترحيل ابناء الاهوار الى, الى مكانات yeah. اخرى بعيدا عن مسقط رؤوسهم اطلب من كل دول العالم وكل محبي البيئه التوقف yeah. الوقوف ضد هذا السد اللي قيمته uh, I... حتى تستمر هاي الاهوار اللي عاشوا بها اجدادنا السومريين حتى تستمر للاجيال bringing people to the marshes to see the natural beauty so they can feel, you know, and get engaged into the issues of bringing international activists that are working with environmental issues to try to bring the issue forward. UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, has accepted a petition from the Iraqi government to declare the Iraqi marshes a World Heritage Site. The petition grew out of a campaign that was a partnership between Iraqi and international environmental and cultural activists to save the Tigris and the Iraqi marshes. The campaign is continuing its efforts to secure final UNESCO designation of the Iraqi marshes as a World Heritage Site and other crucial protective measures. Success would help block the construction of the Ilisu Dam and help preserve this unique and irreplaceable part of human civilization and the rich environment on which it depends. <laughs>